Evolution is most famous for producing endless forms most beautiful and most wonderful. But sometimes, evolution doesn't produce endless variations, but instead a remarkable consistency across great stretches of evolutionary time. In our paper, Increased Variation in Numbers of Presacral Vertebrae in Suspensory Mammals, published in 2019, we try to understand the evolutionary reasons behind one such example of evolutionary stasis. For background, let's break down that title a little bit. Vertebrae are the bones that make up your spinal column from your neck to your tailbone. Your sacrum is several fused vertebrae that join with your hip bones to make your pelvis. Presacral vertebrae are the vertebrae that come before your sacrum when counting from the head. Most humans have seven vertebrae in their neck, 12 in their upper back, and five in their lower back for a total of 24 presacral vertebrae. But just because most humans have that many vertebrae doesn't mean that all humans do, or that all mammals do for that matter. Sometimes you get situations where extra vertebrae or parts of vertebrae fuse to the sacrum, or where fewer vertebrae fuse to the sacrum. Thus, there is variation in the number of presacral vertebrae across different individuals. The developmental reasons behind the variations are fairly well understood. They have to do with genes called Hox genes, which are responsible for planning out the layout of your body. But our study was interested not in why individuals might differ, but why we see changes in variation, or don't see changes in variation, across evolutionary timescales. And on evolutionary timescales, mammalian presacral vertebrae don't vary much at all. Most mammals have exactly 26 or 27 presacral vertebrae. Almost all dogs, cats, bears, and their relatives have 27, while most rodents, rabbits, deer, pigs, marsupials, monkeys, and many others have 26. Almost all variation that does exist comes from the back, not the neck. Nearly all mammals have seven vertebrae in their neck, no matter how long it is. Whales, giraffes, humans, mice, platypuses. Some species just have much longer vertebrae than others. Out of thousands of types of living mammals, there are only three exceptions to this rule of seven. Manatees and both types of living sloths, which have six, six, and nine, respectively. So there isn't much variation, and almost all of what little there is is restricted to the back. This is in stark contrast to reptiles, birds, and fish, which seem happy to grow new vertebrae wherever they need them. So why are mammals different? That's where our study comes in. We counted the number of presacral vertebrae from over 7,000 individuals representing 155 taxa of living mammals. This figure shows an evolutionary tree of mammals, mirrored across the center. On the left side, yellow represents taxa in which there is very little variation among individuals of the same taxon, while purple represents taxa with a lot of variation among individuals. On the right side, yellow represents taxa that typically have the normal 26 or 27 presacral vertebrae. Red indicates taxa with more than that, and blue indicates taxa with fewer than that. You'll notice that although the non-yellow bits don't match perfectly, they do match pretty well, suggesting that taxa with a lot of variation among individuals also tend to deviate from the typical mammalian pattern. Since evolution relies on variation within species as the raw material for change, the lack of variation within species could be what is preventing larger-scale evolutionary changes. In 2014, Gallus and colleagues suggested that fast running might be an important factor in selecting against variation in presacral vertebrae. Many mammals flex and extend their backs while they run, as beautifully demonstrated by this cheetah. Gallus and colleagues argued that if you need to run fast, incomplete fusion between back and sacral vertebrae could impinge on this mobility and slow you down. Thus, any tendency towards changes in the number of vertebrae in the back are selected against. In our study, we tested whether variation in number of presacral vertebrae is associated with running speed, fast, intermediate, or slow, habitat, terrestrial, burrowing, arboreal, or aquatic, type of locomotion, quadrupedal, digging, suspension, bipedal, or swimming, and back stability during movement independent of running speed. So for example, horses keep their vertebrae stiff while running, unlike most mammals, and other mammals such as apes also have stiff backs due to unique postures. In support of Gallus and colleagues' hypothesis, we found that back mobility had a significant effect on presacral variation. But in contrast to their hypothesis, speed per se seemed to have nothing to do with it. Instead, this trend seems to be driven primarily by animals that regularly use suspensory behaviors. Suspensory behaviors are those in which the animal hangs rather than stands. Sloths, gibbons, and children on monkey bars are all examples of suspensory behaviors. So, we found increased variation in numbers of presacral vertebrae in suspensory mammals. We hypothesized that ancestral mammals used their back mobility to help them move, and living mammals inherited this as a default. Only mammals that later evolved different forms of locomotion, like suspension, would have been able to deviate from this pattern without compromising the efficiency of their movements. Our data also suggests that other mammals that don't move like a typical mammal, 
like whales and bats, may also have high levels of variation in presacral vertebrae. But our sample size was too small to say for sure. So time to go count a few thousand more vertebrae. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you learned something new.